but it all did happen when literally we're just about to run out of all of our kind of even non-money as I call it. So which is like, you know, living off credit cards and line of credits and things like that and about money running out. Uh, we had a s short runway and um, Luxie Hair was that kind of Hail Mary. Either this works or we now have lots of debt and we're going to have to go back work at corporate. Hey Insider, I'm back again with a special interview with a success insider called Alex Icon, who's a founder of a very renowned journal called a five minute journal and a seven figure a year in profit business called Luxy Hair, which he founded with his wife Mimi Icon. If you're somebody right now who want to learn how to escape the rat race, or maybe you're in your business right now, but you want to be able to scale it to the million dollar mark, this is the episode for you. Because not only do we discuss the strategies that will help you to become an influencer, thus be able to grow your business, but at the same time, the habits as well as the mindset shift you need to be able to run a seven figure empire. So make sure to pay close attention. And without further ado, Here's an interview with Alex Icon. Enjoy. So you've had some incredible amount of success with your product launches, Productivity Planner, we've got the Five Minute Journal, and then Luxy Hair. Now, today you live a life of freedom and abundance, all of that great stuff, but I know that you've got a story that got you to here. So is it fine if you reveal some of the glimpse of the major steps that you had to take in order to get to where you are? <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you for that intro. Um, yeah, currently I'm 30 years old, turning 31 in about two months. Uh, and I think it all started, you know, uh, from humble beginnings in Russia. I grew up in a very, uh, I would say, lower middle class family in Russia, not in Moscow. So it's, it's it, I think, to most standards, it'd be pretty poor. And uh, I was fortunate enough to immigrate to Canada when I was about 10 years old. And uh, at, at that point, the same thing, it's not like rich Russians emigrating that the stereotype in London, a lot of people have of you being Russian. It's very different. So just kind of, uh, kind of parents taking everything they have and just starting a new life, never been, been to a place. So I'm always been very um, grateful. And I know the opportunity that they gave me to be able to you know, do that and uh, really do it for themselves, but also for us. So it allowed us to have that opportunity and start in the, in the West, which is amazing. So I grew up pretty much in Toronto, Canada. And um, I wanted to be a banker growing up uh, because I thought that was going to be my fastest path to uh, success and money. Mm -hmm. And um, that dream was uh, crushed pretty early on. I was in university studying full time and I was working full time in a bank. And that's how I met my business partner and wife, Mimi. And I got fired from the bank. Um, and uh, I got fired because I did some, have some entrepreneurial tendencies and I had a business on the side, which um, was, it was not a conflict of interest, but it just like when you work for a corporation or for anybody really, I understand they expect you to be fully um, on their time when they're paying you. And so I was let go. And that was really where my entrepreneurial journey really began. So for anybody really listening or watching, I would say that getting fired can be the greatest thing that can happen to you in your life. Um, and the reason I say that is because, uh, honestly, this life that I'm living now, most likely I would not have been kicked to do it in a certain way. I would have most likely led the path of just climbing the corporate ladder because that was a path that I saw for myself. And that's the path that I, I truly actually wanted. I was happening at, at a bank. I was not like, oh, I hate this nine to five. I really enjoyed my time there. And uh, so that's when it all began. But before, like you said, successes and things like that, there was struggle. So there was uh, Mimi <laughs> made her own decision, my wife, to quit um, when I got fired. She's like, hey, I'm not continuing this. I'm just going to quit and we'll figure something out. And this is all the time when I uh, later on proposed to Mimi uh, to get married. This is all when we're broke and unemployed. And then just figuring out stuff out, uh, just like how to, what to do. Um, I said, okay, um, I have two more years of university left. And I don't, I don't consider school like a full-time thing. As you can see, I was working full-time. I, I was having businesses on the side. I'm like, okay, why don't I just dedicate myself instead of working to be doing some businesses and trying different things. So I tried a few things. And this is in the Wild West uh, time of when social media was just beginning in around 2008. And... Uh, at that time, uh, I tried to be like a social media consultant because I really believed in the, in the power of YouTube and social media tools for business as we see it now. 
um, almost 10 years later, which is pretty incredible. This is also when Gary Vaynerchuk was just starting out and his book Crush It and people like Seth Godin. So they're all very inspiring figures for people now, but they were inspiring for me already back then. Um, and that path didn't work out. I, I wasn't really good at sales uh, in that way. And then I came across the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. And that was really uh, the book that inspired really for us to look at life and business in a different way. And a lot of people look at that book like, hey, you just, it's just like sitting on the beach and that, that's the whole goal of what you should be doing. Um, that book is a lot deeper than that. Um, and it's mostly about how do you design your life to live how you want to live. And so just kind of a short story short from then we get into businesses and uh, we're looking for the muse and our first muse business was Luxy Hair. But it all did happen when literally we're just about to run out of all of our kind of even non-money, as I call it. So which is like, you know, living off credit cards and line of credits and things like that and about money running out. Uh, we had a s short runway and um, Luxie Hair was that kind of Hail Mary. Either this works or we now have lots of debt and we're going to have to go back to work at corporate. So what was it that allowed you to persevere during, I mean, that's a big risk you have to take, right? Especially, I mean, even if you connected dots, let's say quitting your job, going all into your business at the time, what, what was it that allowed you to go all in? Because most people I find struggle uh, with risking uh, of any form. Uh, I think at that point, uh, especially for and my wife and even her sister, who was also our third business partner, Layla, and she happened to be our business partner because she was in a similar situation, meaning unemployed and doesn't want to be employed again in a regular kind of setting. And I think it was really that fear of going back to nine to five um, that was like, hey, I'll rather risk it all than like go back to nine to five. Um, because at that point, it, it, we, we didn't see any organization that we're inspired by to work. For example, even uh, the companies that we have now, even Lexi Hair or uh, Intelligent Change, so I, like, I would love to work for those companies uh, because that's how we create those businesses. But the true inspiration was really out of desperation. And I think that's where a lot of that comes. I think that really kicking the ass really comes from when you're, you're at a point of desperation, but you're at the bottom in a certain way where you don't want to go back to where you were before. And it's, in, in a way, it is more painful for you to go back than to even risk it. So it, it, it does come a lot of, out of desperation and uh, pain and not wanting to uh, be there again. And, and most importantly, I think also, that possibility of being able to be in control of your life and to be able to design your life on your own terms. Right. It seems like to me, I mean, I've watched your videos before and you've, you seem very, I suppose, well composed in a way. Is this something that you've always uh, been like, or have you trained yourself to get yourself to this level? Cause you seem like somebody who just can set yourself up to win in anything. Uh, but what do you mean by that? Can you define what, like, in your view of self-composed, like, what do you, what, what's the, what's the version that you see uh, <laughs> online? So I suppose the version I see um, is uh, just, you, you seem like somebody who could just set a goal and not have many stumble blocks along that journey. Uh, it seems like you've really toughened that, that mindset in a way. Uh, is this something that you, you developed over time or do you feel like you've born this way? What would you say to that? <laughs> thank you for that i'll say like anybody else um we all have our challenges um and i think most importantly it's it's being able to embrace that every day and to go in it and then really see every opportunity i guess every challenge is an opportunity as you can see even there i'm, I'm talking already is the opportunity Mm -hmm. uh, but it is really being able to see it from the view of gratitude for even having the ability to be able to even have the chance to do that. Um, you know, majority of people in the world don't even have the ability to even think about, um, hey, I want to maybe do something else or I want to change career. Like most people just have to provide. And I think that's the luxury, especially at that time when, uh, uh, when we're very young and starting is the time to risk. But I'll say for me, and, you know, kind of, like I said, before things really started rolling, there was still two years of like, 
really figuring things out, seeing what works. And we're very fortunate to have had, so one of our, in, in two years time to have one of our businesses really take off, you know, to the extent of, you know, Luxie Hair really did really well. We did seven figures in our first year. Um, and the thing is, that was never the goal. Um, our goal was to make $1,500 a month each, and that's it. Uh, we never had these goals of uh, making millions of dollars and things like that. Mm -hmm. So w what I'm trying to say is in a way it's like, you don't, it may seem like that because number one, we don't have such high expectations and attachments of or like, let's say of myself. And a lot of times I speak of this week because Mimi and I are very tight knit and close my wife and partner. Um, and that allows you to not be so upset when things don't go right. Um, and also not to compare yourself to others. Um, you have to really understand, I think for myself is that I understand that I'm really competing against myself. So if I, I, I remember being at one point when I was really down on myself before, you know, right before I think we started Luxie Hair. And that was at a point I went to a conference and there was like Seth Godin speaking and all these other successful entrepreneurs. And I was, instead of being inspired, I was kind of depressed after that. And the reason I was depressed after that conference is because um, I was, I was look, I was comparing myself to them and I was saying, Hey, like, look at me. I'm like this loser. Like I've done nothing, whatever. And that was not the right, like if you look at yourself as a victim and you pity yourself, like it's really like that's, you can't create out of that space. It's not a, a, a place where you can create out of. So it, it's really that then shifting that ability and reminding yourself like, Hey, like focus on what you do have even when you have, when you, what seems like you have nothing. Um, I think at that point, when you're young and you're broke, you, you think it, like you have nothing, but you can compare yourself to the richest person in the world who's old. He'll trade places with you like, like this. He'll give all his billions away or her billions away just, just to be young and broke again. You know? So um, I, I think uh, appreciating that opportunity, whatever that might be, um, and, uh, that really, that view of that lens is really what allows, I think, me to make it seem like, uh, it, it, like, you know, a lot of people <laughs> look at us and we do those, get those comments like, oh, it's just so easy. Um, there's a, I think there's a lot of, uh, s challenges and struggles, but I think most importantly, same thing to that point of is most importantly, not focusing on that because a lot of people just get stuck in being a victim and like how there's all these challenges and it's difficult and like life sucks and it's, and they're overcoming it. It's you create your own story. So we just choose to not uh, talk about that narrative of like, it's challenging and it's hard. And it's surprising how uh, with that lens, your things are able to really pan out better for yourself. Is there sort uh, sort of like ritual or routine uh, or like a habit you've built up to be able to reframe like that constantly? Well, of course. Well, like the 500 journal is the product of the routine in a way that we want to create for ourselves. And even Intelligent Change and, and the 500 journal is a product that came out of, uh, once again, not more of, as, as from my side. Uh, it didn't really come out from that idea like, hey, I want to make lots of money. I want to uh, make more wealth. Uh, that product came out of number one, out of my own need, um, and interest in that product, uh, for my co-founder, UJ, um, it was more, he approached me a few years before uh, we even started intelligent change. Uh, he wanted to start a muse business and he approached me cause he knew I, I ran a lifestyle business and he wanted to create one of his own. So right away from the beginning, I told him, you know, don't create businesses just for the sake of money. Um, because at that point, even with the first business, I've learned that, uh, all my life being pretty much poor, I thought money was going to solve everything, but getting to that point where you're able to create wealth very quickly, you're able to then learn like, Oh, it's not all as like, as it's cracked up to be like, there's, <laughs> there's other things to deal with. And then really, uh, you know, it, it's not the all problem solver. It's it solve certain problems. Uh, but it also brings out other problems as well. So when you're creating a business, you, you better make sure you, you're actually enjoying what you're doing because it's going to take up a lot, a lot of your time. And in order for you to succeed, you better be liking and enjoying that experience. Uh, but going back to that practice and, and also the story of the five minute journal, that, uh, that idea really came out of, okay, like, let's create something that 
if you're going to do a business, create something that you really want to see in this world. And at that point, what we were just discussing and a lot of our conversations with friends was more about self-growth and improving yourself and things like that, kind of like what you do on your channel. And uh, we then quickly learned that there's all these things, all these tactics and habits of like how to become better and whatever, but or you read all these great books on happiness, but then you close them and you're like, okay, that's great. They tell me how to do all these things, but how do I actually do it? And the five minute journal is just a, a way for us to uh, summarize and take up what we feel is like the 80, 20, same thing of certain uh, practices or routines you can create in your life. Um, to then help you instill that mindset. And like I said, Five Minute Journal was really creative for us in that certain way. I didn't care, we're, okay, we're like, I told the UJ, we'll just do this as a test stage, let's go as, as, a, as partners. And I just wanna see this product exist, I wanna create it for myself. So even if we go through this whole process and we have a thousand units in stock, I don't care if I, we have these units, you get to learn how to create a product, how to create a business. And I get to have a product that I want to have in my life that I want to use every day. So the five minute journal was really like uh, in that backstory was that tool to help uh, really ourselves and for others to be able to prime their mind in that way. And that's why we call it the toothbrush for your mind. You know, you, as you, as you said, um, what what is that how do we how do you get it well you know that's why i tell people all the time it's like you brush your teeth and floss your teeth hopefully you know every day uh why do you do that and even for to you like why do you do that tim uh just to maintain hygiene i suppose <laughs> yeah exactly maintain hygiene right and overall what will happen if you stop like you'll say brushing your teeth go to the dentist often <laughs> Well, if that's, if that's even, but like, you know, it, things will deteriorate. Yeah, yeah. Fungus and bacteria will grow in there. It's like, it's a natural state that weeds will grow. Same thing in a garden or anywhere else. But for some reason, we have this idea that like your mind is like, you don't need to do anything to keep it clean. Uh, we feel like, oh, well, it, it'll just take care of itself. Uh, but the reality is, especially in, in the society that we're living in with the media and our overall how, current technology and media resources understand that the way to hi, uh, hijack your brain is by spreading negativity. Because through evolution, that is the information that grabs your attention the most and gets you into that kind of fear state and gets your attention. Um, and, and that's why so many people, uh, their mind is really hijacked by news, by media, by how the world is so bad and all that stuff, which is not actually the reality. The world has never been better. Uh, we're probably living in the best time we've ever lived. It's never been safer. There's more opportunity than we ever had. It's an incredible time. Uh, but if you really ask most people, do you think the world is better or safe? They'll tell you no. Um, so same thing. Like that's why I said the five minute journal is, was just a way for us, even uh, ourselves knowing this, uh, to create this practice of just reminding ourselves the right thing. In the, and the reason there's a reason why we say do it first thing in the morning, last thing at night, same thing as brushing your teeth, is that you want you know, when you wake up for your first thoughts to be like, hey, what are the things I'm grateful for? What's, what's great that's gonna happen today? What's my daily affirmation of who I am? And then say, before you go to sleep, that the last thoughts that you go to sleep with are like, what are three amazing things that happened today? Right, so you're, you're uh, looking back at the day and looking to choose to see the good. Mm -hmm. And what magically happens with time, this is like, even with like, you know, there's a, you know, I, I can vouch this for myself, but now that there's hundreds of thousands of people who have bought it and used it um, and keep spreading the message, which is magical, is that idea of that it really, with time, it really begins to shift your mindset. But same thing like with anybody else, you can't expect things to happen like overnight. You can't expect all of a sudden for your negativity to go away. And you can't expect that you'll just stop practicing this whether you with a five minute journal or without and expect for your mind to just be there it's just like it's the same thing like muscles right like if you go to the gym and you exercise you can't expect like tim if you go to the gym for a year and then you're like you know what after a year i'm really fit i think i'm good now like i, I <laughs> this is good like i'm just gonna i like the state I'm, I'm just gonna stop working out like what would happen if you if you did that begin to lose the muscles and stuff right <laughs> Exactly. So it's the same thing here. So overall, this is what I, I really kind of believe in 
is the importance of uh, your mindset and, and really tending your garden in your mind. Right. I want to go back to what you're saying earlier in regards to you. You said you were very bad at sales at one point. Would you say you're still bad at sales, or have you transformed that? No, I'm still bad at sales. Uh, <laughs> really? what I, well, yeah. What I mean by that is like there's different types of selling. Okay. And at that time, uh, when I was selling a service, I was trying to sell myself, right? And and my abilities and things like that. Mm-hmm. I can say now I'm. Um, I'm good at sales because our business has generated sales, but the way we generate sales is through a different kind of method. And uh, so traditional model of like trying to pitch services or, or do things like that doesn't really work for me. Like I'm really bad at cold calling. Like I, I still remember when I was working in the bank and my boss would come in and be like, Hey, here's this stack of numbers. Like start dialing, you know, like <laughs> it's like those, those like old school and like try to sell people on stuff. And I'll be like horrified of that. And, but now using these new resource technology and having more of that ability of using these channels to provide people value um, and just be there for people, become a resource for value or for inspiration, whatever other value that people will get, then allows people to get curious about you. Because number one, you're providing them something that they're already looking for. So say, I'll give you an example of our first business in Alexi here. The reason how that business grew organically and, you know, to this day is because we didn't have a lot of money so we, and we really believed in social media. So we just started a YouTube channel showing people on how, not on, on hair extensions, we started a YouTube channel on how to create different hairstyles and, or different t- uh, tricks and tips for um, how to have better hair. For women and with that and we're consistent in create, creating that content for people and what i always say when in regards to creating content you're just like planting seeds right and the more seeds you plant the more things you will harvest and with time people will be looking for that kind of content we'll be creating content that people are looking for and then they'll stumble across, they'll look at our video and they'll be like, wow, like that was really helpful or whatever. And maybe in that video, we wouldn't say like, hey, buy our hair extensions, go to luxyhair.com. We never did that. Um, so in our videos, if you look back, they would just say, for example, like if in some hairstyles and not even all, Mimi would sometimes wear, let's say, hair extensions. And she'll say, hey, for this hairstyle, I'm wearing Luxy hair extensions. That's it. And she goes on. But most of the video is pure value driven. And with that, that was, that's our way of selling. You know, we like to have more of that, of like a value-based approach to be able to sell to people and to be able to have them instead be interested and for them to make that choice like, hey, you know that, I'm interested in this or this is cool, like they, they provided me value. Oh, like, hey, I just did that hairstyle and my hair doesn't look like that, what happened? So you kind of get people to, to make those decisions themselves and then uh, make that kind of purchase. You know, same thing with even, let's say, the, the five-minute journal or productivity planner or any, any of these things. We're, it's more driven by inspiration, meaning even by our, like, lifestyle. People are like, whoa, like, these guys live a great life. Like, what the hell do they do? And sometimes maybe we'll feature, and you'll see we're doing the feature our products even that much. Sometimes we would feature maybe in our story or um, on our Instagram that, like, hey, here's the five-minute journal, right? That's it. Like, yeah, but they're like, this is interesting like okay this is what these people do to get to where they are because what you quickly realize um, is that you with time create your own bubble you live in your own bubble and you think like oh yeah everybody like practices or does this or do or like no it doesn't matter like uh, that for people to even do this stuff because it's so like everybody reads these books but it's not true most people don't read books most people don't even finish books even that buy books so there's all these things that you realize that and, and by even what you're doing, let's say for with your channel, um, you, you mean like people know this stuff, but they don't, right? And that's why it's important. And, and so many people who are watching this uh, will maybe learn something new or just be able to, through our conversation uh, and be able to see and gain value from like, wow, like I didn't know that people live this way or I didn't know that it's that important to tend your mind in the same way that you brush your teeth. Like that's an interesting concept. 
maybe I should be more careful with uh, what thoughts I put into my mind or what people I hang around with and all that stuff. Uh, so that's what, that's our, that's our overall sales approach. It's more, uh, give as much, uh, give more than you can take. And is this something you would recommend, let's say to a, a fresh entrepreneur who's starting out right now, this sort of approach nowadays? Uh, I think the thing is most important is you have to do stuff that's r- truly resonates and authentic to you. And you can't, you know, you, I don't, I don't believe you can force people to do that unless they're genuinely, um, irre- they're representative of who they are. But I just believe in general in life, uh, the biggest thing that I've learned, uh, you know, before I was able to generate money for myself and wealth, I always focused on myself and I was like, okay, how do I get money? Um, why don't I have money? What's going on? Like, why am I poor? Why are these people rich? Like it was a me versus them mindset. But the biggest mindset shift that I had is to realize that like, nobody cares about me right? Like hands down, like nobody cares about Alex and that he wants money. Like, like who would know? Tim is not going to say, Hey, Alex, I see you need money. Like, uh, I'd like to help you out. That's rare. Maybe it can happen, but it's, that's not the case. And, uh, what I then realized for myself is like, what is money? Right? Why would people, uh, give somebody else their money? And the only reason somebody else is going to pay you for something is if they're gonna get some sort of value in return. And the moment I started seeing that as money is a transfer of value that people get and people are willing to pay more from the turning on the, on the amount of value that they receive for whatever your service or good, whatever it may be, it totally changed my game. Because uh, then from then I realized from, from everything we do in all of our businesses, it's all focused on the end kind of person. It's not us. We're not creating businesses for ourselves. We're creating a business for others. How can we serve when we're, when we're improving our website? We're not thinking, how can we make more money? We're, a lot of times we're, we're thinking, how can we create a better experience that will give more value to the user that will allow them to see that they're going to get more value from this product than from competitors, right? So it's always that value-based game. Um, so that's the, the biggest thing I'd recommend to anybody really starting out or even now is to have that shift of focus of how uh, you can drive value for others because you become, you know, the wealthiest people in our world are in a certain way are the ones who deliver the most value to the world. And so you can argue and say, well, what about all those like crooks or uh, gangsters or who sell drugs or do uh, oil and stuff like that? Hey, like there's obviously, People who are, for the, some people, that's valuable to them, right? And, and it's not always good cases, addiction or uh, need for fossil fuels and all that stuff. But there's an, obviously a demand and need because those things, especially like oil, that run the world. So that's why oil makes so much money because it's needed to create commerce currently at this stage. Uh, but it's all really based on the value system, on all everything that you see in the world. And I think this, just to finish that thought, is also that idea of, uh, that was important for me to realize is that still that money is that story, right? And everything is really a story. Your business is a story. Your brand is a story. It just, you're just giving people a different perception of who you are, or what your product is, and how you represent. It's just a different way of creating stuff. <laughs> Amazing. How much of your, uh, let's say, success with Luxie Hair comes from trial and error versus learning from other people, let's say, mentors and so forth? Uh, it's a combination of both, really. And I, I think something that, I, that was one of the best things that we've done with Luxie Hair is that we just jumped in. You know, if I look back on our first website that I myself kind of put together with a template and like some PayPal buttons, I would like cringe at it today. I'm like, it's, are you really going to make money off that? And I think a lot of people, same thing as, I, as I'm saying now, even to myself, is that they put themselves off by creating something or starting something because they compare themselves to what they see that is currently existing. That's like big or popular or have lots of money behind it. 
So with overall, like what I'm trying to say with creation, you have to understand that you have to start somewhere and that you, you have sometimes also have to start with what, with what you have. And it's better to, it's better to start early and, and do trial and error and improve than trying to wait for that one day or that one day when you have enough money to launch something or that for that one day when you can perfect your product um, is that just to kind of launch and see because the market will be the ultimate really teach like uh, feedback to you who will tell you is this resonating or is this not resonating what's going on and then through the trial and error you can learn however i would say that uh, that's one thing but in regards to inspiration and mentors or learning from others it's massive um i would say most of my mentors have been virtual meaning not through like this skype uh, kind of things but uh, through books through audio books most importantly through youtube videos as what you're currently doing now because even this like whoever's watching this you know it's great for you as well to do this because a lot of times people will share even as i'm sharing now like these are like this is how i think these are my thoughts. This is what has really led me to be where I am. You can take that and actually absorb it or you can dismiss it, but this is my truth. And this is how, let's say, my version of, of the current state of how I got here, which is super interesting. So we can learn a lot from other people. And that's what I always do. So I'm always listening to audiobooks and podcasts to kind of shows like your, yours. Uh, to be able to learn from others and from their trials and errors because a lot of lessons even from other people that you learn from comes from their trials and errors. And a lot of times uh, other people's trials and errors are a lot more experienced or, and also more expensive than your trial and errors. So it's better to learn from others than to learn from your own trials and errors. So it's a combination of both. As I said, you still have to do your own trial and errors, but at the same time, you can learn from others uh, and through their inspiration. So I do uh, both. And, um, and when I can, of course, in person, it's great as well. Talk about, <clears throat> talk about belief and uh, development. What, what, do you, what do you believe nowadays um, that you didn't believe when you began, but you wish if you did, it would have accelerated the amount of business success, let's say you would have had? Um, I'll say one thing is I wish I spent more money and invested in other people earlier. And what I mean by that is, you know, looking back now, only like a few years ago, really, I'll say the last two years, how we started really hiring, how we started really growing our team and understanding how important it is to invest in your team and to, I think a lot of entrepreneurs fears at the beginning is is that ability of like like um will i be able, like if i pay somebody else will i be able to recoup that money and have some sort of return on somebody else's labor especially if you're a first-time entrepreneur it's like it's, it's a very like you know mm -hmm. salaries are are not cheap especially <clears throat> if you employ people in in western countries you know uh and not somewhere off or whatever but even there it's all creeping up so that's what i'm just trying to communicate i wish i learned that um to be more kind of aggressive in that regards to be able to uh get more other people involved get people who are smarter than me build teams um and really invest in others because i think it's really important and uh, how many people are involved with your company right now? I believe I see it sort of vlog one time, but how many people are actively in your team? Yeah, so it's, it's changing like quickly. And uh -huh. so currently at Luxie Hair, we, we have about 11, staff of 11, 12 okay. um, in the Toronto office. Um, we, they just moved to a new office. So the one you saw in my vlog is already different, um, which I'm really excited about. I'll be there next week. So I'll probably update it <laughs> after I'm up to date on my vlogs but it'll be on my Instagram stories and things like that. Um, so that team is around that size. Intelligent Change, which now has uh, Luxie Hair's old office, which is really exciting. It's a really beautiful space. Um, they're currently, I believe, it's about like all in all, like about five people. Um, however, we're undergoing a lot of also restructuring at the moment and really setting the foundation for, as I said, with even this realization that we have about how important it is to build the right team 
And if, especially if you have the resources to do it, like, why aren't you doing it? I think that's another learning is that, um, I think earlier on, I, we would hoard a lot of money. Uh, in a way, what I, what I mean by that is uh, not, re, not reinvesting it uh, enough and, and, and seeing business not as a way to, for only to provide cash flow for yourself. Like we, we had more of a lifestyle business focus. We're mostly thinking of ourselves in that uh, capacity. But I think true seeing now, true purpose of a business is to be able to create more value for other people, including the stakeholders of like even people who work for you. So why not create more jobs and opportunities if you can? Because with then with those people, you're able to then create in the end more value to the world. However, you know, hiring is very tricky in, in that regard. So you have to make sure that you have people who will really align with your values, who really see the vision that you see. And if you're on it together, then it can be a very fulfilling thing. So that's the current state of our businesses. What, what's your process for hiring uh, key players and star players? Um, I think, like I said, uh, we're still very early in this. You know, you can, you know, a lot of people are a lot more experienced than us in this space. However, I, I believe we're very fortunate to have had, you know, um, very great hires that have made a big difference. And I'll say in those, the best people are the people that I just mentioned. They're the people who really are aligned with your values and who really see the vision that you see and they're aligned on that. It's the same thing like with any partnership, but even if you're, you know, friends or even you're a romantic partner, unless you guys share the same values and have the same vision together, you're not going to last. Mm. And it's the same thing with your employees and your business partners. Like you have to be able to have those two core things. So um, hiring is really based on that. Even now we're reapproaching our hiring process. How can we make sure that even through our interview process, we make sure that people align to the values that we have. And are these typically, uh, let's say, people who follow your work or do they tend to be just cold people, let's say from the outside world that you've uh, advertised for? Yeah, I, I'll say uh, the best people have also become from our actual like people who follow us. Oh, okay. And uh, I think the reason for that is the same thing to what I said earlier is that if they're following you, most likely they're aligning with your values and your vision. So they like what you represent, what you are, and they want to be part of that thing, you know, that you, uh, that you kind of bring in your represent in a certain way, or you're trying to build. So those, those have been the best hires is people from our own network. Okay, great. You mentioned earlier in regards to how you foresaw you know, platforms such as YouTube, all of these social media taken off. And now I suppose everybody's riding the wave of social media and understanding the importance of that. If you were to, let's say, give advice to people who are jumping on board nowadays, um, do you feel like there's something that is a strategy or a tip that could help them? Because people, let's say, try to launch a YouTube channel nowadays and they quickly find out it's not as easy as just simply posting a video. What <laughs> advice would you give to, let's say, if we were to focus on YouTube for people who want to grow their uh, follower base and be able to serve more people? Yeah, I've, we've always had the same formula uh, from the beginning. And even me, myself, knowing this formula, I don't always follow it. Um, however, when I follow it or when I see people follow it, it always works. Um, so it's more about like saying things like, you know, you, it's, it's kind of, uh, you know, you just have to put it in practice, uh, but you have to want to put it in practice and understand that it's going to take work. So the formula is pretty simple. Um, I had this, like, I think I made videos about this even years ago, but it's called QVCA, QVCA. It's a basic formula. You can use this for anything. Mm -hmm. Um, so QVC is the biggest shopping network in the world. I think it still is. It's those, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the shopping network. Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you, it's still a multi-billion dollar business, I believe. So they just like sell stuff this way. I can't sell stuff. So, <laughs> Hey, like here, you can have this, uh, bottle of water for uh, 10, 10 easy payments of 1999 or whatever. Right. And all that stuff, like very American way of selling. Um, so I kind of took that thing and I see like, okay, how do you grow? How do you also sell, uh, through these social media networks? And I kind of earlier on when we, when our businesses really took off, I was like, 
you know, I've always don't see myself as a special person. You know, a lot of times my mom would be like, oh my God, you're so special. I'd be like, nah, I don't know. I really don't think I'm special. Like, thank you. Like, I know my mom, you love me, but I just know I'm just a normal person. And I think that's another like characteristic of mine is just understand that you're not special. Um, and it may be negative, but it's not because it humbles you and grounds you. Um, so then I tried to really understand like, why is it that where you have like millions of subscribers, let's say, in regards to Lexi Hair or that, that channel got over 300 million views and things like that. Um, like, why is this happening? Or why does this happen for other people? Like, what do they do? What's the strategy? And I came down to these four things, Q, V, C, A, after the shopping network, A is the new strategy. So Q is for quality. So create quality content. So whether it be on YouTube or on Instagram, you have to create quality content. It doesn't have to be, but the thing about quality, where, and I think it's important where I mentioned is like, don't obsess about being in like, you know, super high def, no multiple camera stuff. You don't, you don't want that either, right? That's not the most important thing. Just make sure that your more or less your video is good, your audio is good, um, and if people are able to see you or see your pictures and they have a good light, overall good effect, because it matters and it's important. Um, Overall quality is important, um, especially now. I think is trending on Instagram, especially and even on YouTube, is higher quality content is winning uh, in regards to actual quality. Uh, but the second word, which is V, um, and it's also about in regards to qual uh, quality, is value, right? So is your content providing value? You always have to be, like I said before, providing values. So first one is quality. Make sure your quality is content. Two is value. So what I mean by that is like you have to see your content as some way of providing some sort of value to people. So if you're a girl who's doing bikini shots on Instagram, well, there's definitely driving some value to some people. People enjoy looking at beautiful women in bikinis and things. Well, that's some value that you're driving, right? Who, who's to argue whatever? That's some sort of value. If you're Tim, like yourself, you have your channel. You, well, you're providing people value through inspiring content or content that uh, for people to, on their path to success, whatever it is, that's value. Uh, maybe there's other channels, let's say on YouTube, who are just strictly comedy. And there's value in, in making people laugh because people just want to laugh. Or, or there's value even, let's say, you know, those vlogs, people like those daily vlogs, the ones I post, and you're like, what's the value in that? Well, the value in that is that a lot of people want to escape. They want to escape their life. They just want to like not think sometimes. Um, and they just want to turn off. Well, you're, sir, you're giving people value in that regards as well. So there's, there's always different types of value, but understand that you're in the game of value. Very important. I've talked about it many times. So quality, value, third one. And the last two are the most important because you can do the first two. You can do quality. You can be giving value. But if you're not doing the last two, you're, like, you're done. And this is the one that I, I think most creators fall off, including myself. And this is why I don't grow as fast or I'm not successful as much as I can be is because I don't do these last two, especially this one, consistency, right? When you're creating content on any platform, you have to understand you have to be consistent. So you have to be regular with your content or whether it be on Instagram or on YouTube, you want to hook people to be expecting like, when's that next thing coming? Because there's already been trillions of dollars spent to get people's psychology to be expecting like, oh, even like back in the day, like at 8 p.m. on Sunday, Simpsons is on. Like, I'm looking forward to that. You know, you want something that if there's consistency in your content on any platform, people, there'll be a pattern that people will start anticipating kind of in a way like, you know, uh, salivating for that content like oh it's like you, you you understand that dinner is at this time you're already getting prepared for that anyways so consistency it's very important to be consistent on instagram for example at nowadays you have to post like three to four times a day in reality with the new algorithm if you really want to succeed um and on youtube you know you have to have regular content at least like once a week twice a week um same thing that's why i say even myself I know this, but I don't always do it, but I just know if I do it, I will grow. Um, and then the last one, and this is probably the most important out of everything is authenticity. 
So you have quality, you have value, you have consistency. And the last one is authenticity, meaning are you truly being yourself or are you creating content, whatever that is being truly authentic to you? You can pull it off, not creating stuff that is fully aligned with you or a thing, but most likely you won't be able to do it for a long time. And that's something just for, I think for anybody to realize is that, you know, as to if you align with your authentic things that you're interested in, there's more likely that you'll be able to su succeed in this longer. And it's the same thing in business. It's the same thing in creating content because creating content is like a business. Uh, but it's that uh, make sure that you're being authentic in your delivery, in your message, um, in your own self, because people, even I know for myself personally, like, I know that when I posted, let's say a certain photo even, and it was a true, like it was, it was not a stage photo. It was like a real, like somebody was able to capture a real moment. Those real, like truly real, authentic non-pose uh, life captures are so powerful because people feel it, right? And it's the same thing people feel when uh, they're interacting or speaking or somebody speaking from an authentic point of view. Because when you're able to do that, people really crave that as well. Because a lot of times, most people are not being that, that their authentic selves. And this is the same reason why we love, even now there's this fascination, I think, with a lot of Instagram or uh, YouTube and all these people who like people like to follow them, is because it allows people to live through other people in their own way, it allows them to be able to kind of uh, take away their fears and to be able to do stuff they wouldn't be able to do. So that is why it's so important for you to be authentic in that way. And authenticity is not like, you know, it's something that you're always developing, but it's important to remind yourself still is like, is this, is this kind of the, you know, am I aligned with this? Is this something I want to be doing? Is this something, the direction I want to be going? And most likely you'll have a lot more success with that than trying to be like hustle and Gary V, but that's not you. You know, so mm. you can't, you, you can't fake being a hustler. If you're not a hustler, <laughs> you have to be a hustler, you know, like, so, you know, I have, like, so for me, like I have a different style, you know, I, I do things differently. So I just, I just do things with how I, I do them. And I'm, I'm being authentic to myself. I can't try to be, you know, hustle Alex. Like Alex is different. He, I hustle in a different way. I have different <laughs> methods, uh, but I embrace that. And I think a lot of people, uh, get lost in that way because they're trying to you know it's okay to get inspired uh from others it's okay to try different things but it also so it's very important to have that self-awareness in yourself by being like am i aligned with this is this like am i really feeling this um and not to say just the like last thing i think on that point of authenticity which i think is really difficult for a lot of people to grasp mm -hmm. anything that you do for the first time will feel weird so don't like people will run away be like, Oh, that's not authentic. I can't be on camera because whatever Mimi told me, uh, I told Mimi to start a YouTube channel two years before she started a YouTube channel. She told me, I, I just don't, I don't see myself on camera. I'm shy, whatever. Mimi's like, she's so comfortable like on camera and all that stuff now. Uh, but, and she's embraced it and she loves it. Like she truly genuinely like Ashley loves Instagram, loves taking pictures, even if, Instagram wouldn't be popular, should still be taking pictures. Uh, so that's what I mean. Like even with just that example, Mimi was taking thousands of pictures before there was Instagram. So when Instagram came out and I'm like, Mimi, you should use Instagram. Like I just see you taking pictures and what do you do with those? Should you just have those on your phone? Like you're generally enjoy taking pictures, post. Um, so that's why it comes easier to her and she can be at that level of like over a million followers because it's a, it's a platform that is authentic to her. She generally loves uh, that platform. Yeah. What, what, um, what advice would you give to people, let's say, who, who struggle in that, in that sense? Uh, you're saying it's something you develop, but how, how do you develop being genuine and authentic? Um, I think most importantly, as you touched on before, is the trial and error, right? And I think... Um, you have to really commit, but the commitment phase comes as like, you have to really want it. And I think that's the reason why most people don't succeed or they don't want something. They just don't want it bad enough. And that's why I, I one of my points earlier, I was saying that it has to be authentic to you. It's something that you enjoy doing. 
you won't be able to go through all the challenges unless it's authentic to you. For example, uh, we enter this as a lifestyle thing. It is now way beyond lifestyle for us, meaning it is our life. It's a good Friday right now, right? I choose to be in the office and to be working because it's my choice because I, this is what I want to be doing right now where I know that I'll be traveling next week. I have to focus now. Like this is my choice. I don't like it. I don't feel bad for myself. I'm loving it. Like to me, I like, it's actually harder for me to pull away a lot sometimes from creating, from work. Same thing for Mimi. It's harder for her not to actually create. And that is because she got to that state where it's, 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 it's aligns to what she enjoys doing. And a lot of people, they don't like a lot of people right now, they want to be entrepreneurs and things like that. But the reality is it's hard. There's a lot of like, it's, there's a lot of risks. There's a lot of decisions that have to be made. You have to get comfortable or welcome being part of that. One of the things that I enjoy about being on entrepreneurship, for example, is that idea of that you're responsible for everything. Right. And for a lot of people, that's actually not like I, I, a lot of people want, they, they feel they, they, they think they want to be fully responsible. But when you actually give people full responsibility, they're like, whoa, like that's too much. Like I want to like, I want to have somebody to blame or like, I, like I want somebody, like somebody to report to, or I want somebody to, to give me directions. Like people are not comfortable being in that state. And how do you find out? If you like, like you're saying, what's the tip on get into that? You have to do it, but you have to, well, I guess one of the things that I forgot in my formula, the quality value, uh, consistency, authenticity in that consistency piece, you also have to commit, right? So commit to being consistent. So for example, if you're creating this, you know, or you want to something, you have to commit for a certain time, at least to act in this manner. So you're like, hey, I commit, or at least, okay, I really want to uh, become an influencer, let's say, right? Okay, cool, I'm gonna commit for the next two years, commit to do all that I can and study that all I can to be the best that I can in this thing. In that commitment, right, there's that consistency piece, there's that authenticity piece that you build, but you build that through consistency and commitment. But it's going to take commitment and you're going to have to see things through. You're going to have to fail. You have to learn, but you have to really commit to being full in on that experience. And I think um, when you commit and you're fully into it and you just don't back out because it's not comfortable, then you are able to reap the rewards. And I think, you know, one of the greatest books that I read in the last year, I'll say is the subtle art of not giving a, you know, a, a, I don't know if you can swear or not, uh, but in that book, Mark Manson really discusses that idea that, you know, everybody wants to have a great relationship or have money and all that stuff, but nobody wants to go through the hard stuff. But that's the thing to understand in order to get good in anything or anything to go or, or, or even to see what your authentic self is. Sometimes you have to be on a path where you figure out after a year, like, this is not me at all. And you have to be then pull out. I have friends who had successful seven figure, multiple multi-million dollar businesses that really just at one point said, hey, this is really not me and I'm just gonna quit my business. I've seen that. At first I thought they're crazy, right? They're like, you know, they're making money and <laughs> a lot of money, I'm like, that, that does not make sense. But now looking back at that person, I have so much respect because now I see that person, you know, also go through that struggle and now be aligned and do what they love doing in their life. It's inspiring. It's amazing. I can even show this person's name. It's uh, Jason Gaynard from uh, Mastermind Talks. Um, you know, I knew him before all this stuff um, and look into his stuff if anybody's watching, but super inspiring story. Like I, I was there when he was like, I'm quitting my business. And I'm like, oh my God. So uh, I'm like, that's stupid. Uh, but now looking back, I'm like, that's amazing. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say is that that commitment to see things through and even become successful. And at that point also be being committed to being authentic and realizing like, I can't just keep doing this just for, because it's not authentic. And that's why I say that last, the reason I say off, I save authenticity for last, that's the really deciding factor.
you have to really see if this is something for you. We also will say even question at some point, like about Luxie hair, like what value are we doing here? Like we're, we're selling hair extensions. That didn't cross, like that crossed our minds. Mm -hmm. However, we then realized, we started seeing the purpose and value that we do deliver to many women, to our, to the marketplace, to the way we even do business in this industry and how we're overall improving, even let's say this business side. So like, why not? If we're still doing good and we're creating good, that's not, it's not a bad thing at all to be making money. Cause a lot of times people self-sabotage and make themselves also feel bad for their success. That's one of the patterns. Anyways, so that's, that's my thing is I'll say consistency and commitment to, to whatever you're doing. Amazing. Alex, I just want to say thank you so much for contributing so much value to our insiders. Really, really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. If you were to, let's say, just summarize the entire 60 minutes uh, with one, one message, what, what would that be? Um, it's a tough one. I would say just try something, you know, I, I like I just simplify, like, don't try to get fancy. Don't try to like, uh, become a millionaire and try to become wealthy. Don't try to become like fit or skinny overnight. Like, like stop that. I like just, just do one thing and just start trying things. Um, and I think I just, uh, or I, I have on my profile, just like, just do it. Right. Kind of like Nike, uh, like my secret is just to, to just do it. And same thing is just like, I think if you just start somewhere and just take a step um, on to some direction, instead of just being in your place or being a victim of your situation, it can really help you at least start stepping into that direction to making those moves. Because the reason so many people don't do anything is because they make the whole thing too big. And they're like, I can never do that. Of course you can, right? I could never have thought I could even employ people. To me, that was like, I just want to pay myself. <laughs> now to be able to pay salaries to people and to be able to provide so much value. I'm like, I'm like back then, I'm like, I, that was my dream to even make that much money of how much salary we give to the person. I never thought. If I started back then, that's why I said back then, our goal was to just make like $1,500 a month. It's not actually not a lot of money, especially like if you live like in the West and especially in Toronto. Um, but that was our goal. So like start small just do one thing um, and day by day you just grow and if you have that attitude it's really gonna help you out so just start today do one thing uh, towards to what you want to do thank you so much Alex for all of that value thank you um, insiders if you got if you learned something if you got value today be sure to share this video with your friends and loved ones as life is all about contribution after all and comment below in regards to any questions feedback you may have for Alex and like this video if you like this video and as always follow your heart my friend and take action and I'll see you on the next video soon